of applause. She is the Chair of Economics at the University of Turin, Scientific Coordinator at the Centre for Research on Pensions and Welfare Policies. And she's going to answer this great question, can financial literacy improve our lives and advance our society? Reasons and evidence for a positive answer. So Elsa, the floor is yours to address the comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you just uh, tell me? Okay. So it's Friday evening. I bet you had two very intense days and I bet you're tired. I was yesterday in Rome and I am tired. Uh, so I said uh, maybe be, instead of having kind of lecture, which is not uh, the right time for a lecture, I will tell you a story. And that is the story of how I became convinced of the importance of financial literacy, uh, not just from an individual perspective, but from a society point of view. And that's engendering and, uh, equal opportunities, which is much more than gender equality. And uh, I had in that role to, uh, to prepare two reforms uh, that were approved by Parliament, uh, the pension and the labor market reform. And it is from that experience, and also afterwards, what happened, because the two reforms became laws, and they are laws in the Italian uh, law landscape now. And uh, so, uh, reflecting upon that experience, as an academic, I really uh, became progressively convinced that financial education is uh, more than something that can help you, guide you during your life cycle, but it is nowadays an essential element of citizenship, exactly like writing, making a bit of calculation and reading was an element of uh, citizenship early in the late 19th century or early 20th century when it became compulsory. And I don't know about your country, but if you go back in my own, if I go back in my own country experience and I look at the discussion there, there were many people opposing compulsory education elementary education, because they thought it would have been easier to govern the country if people were not knowing too much. We are talking about literacy, so we are not talking about making people financial experts, but that is what I'm very convinced, and that's why I want to tell you the story. So. I started as an economist. I am an economist. And that is, uh, let's say, where I grew up. That is the famous uh, Modigliani account of people's life cycle. Modigliani is the only Italian um, Nobel laureate. And you see, it's very nice. So here you have, uh, on the horizontal, axis, you have the individual life. And it starts when work starts, okay? Before you are in the family. Before is the family looking after you. So you are not really an individual. You don't take the, you don't make decision. And then you start working. The blue is also a retirement income, so there is somebody paying you a pension. But the pension is uh, it's a bit less than what you want to consume. So indeed, the difference between your income and your consumption while you are working is your retirement saving, okay? And when you retire, 
your income is lower than your uh, consumption, so you dissave. And this means that if you look not at income, savings, consumption, but if you look at the stock, which is wealth, which is debt maybe, you look at the green uh, uh, line, and it means that uh, you begin uh, to save, your wealth increases, uh, and it, it reaches a maximum when you retire, and then it decreases. This is the life cycle. Um, it's a model that has influenced profoundly all the economic research. I said it's dull, you know that economics is the dismal science. It's dull because there is no particular joy. You may attach joy. For example, during your working life, you meet somebody, you form a family, you have children, you marry or, or you don't, it's up to you. Um, you have joy and uh, maybe complex situation that you have to solve, but this is not a matter for economists. Economists look at income, how you earn your income, and so on and so on. So you may add uh, that we have longevity risk, which is very important, and the Lincoln said, and in the end, it's not the years in your life that count, it's the life in your years, which I think it's very important today that we discuss very much longevity risk. So who takes care of those risks? Um, no, what? No, no, sorry. Maybe, okay, it's here. Who takes care of major life cycle risk? Now consider, for centuries, for women, it was the husband, the family, and then the husband who took care of the risk. Then you may think of the market. If you are American, go on your own, buy insurance. There is little that the state provides you. If you are in Europe, we have, or had, the welfare state, and that means uh, that the state is providing you social insurance, uh, not so much efficiency in the design, uh, and you can have the same level of pension provisions, uh, not immediately maybe, with more sustainability. So you put your system, you, you can say, Okay, and this is what we say to Italian people, because sometimes the young, and maybe also here in Austria, they say, oh, we'll not have any pension. And we say, no, you need work, you need a job. If you have a job, the system will provide you a pension benefit. If you don't have a job, the system can provide you a benefit, but that is assistance, nothing to do with the pension benefit, which is retirement savings. Okay? So this is the essence. And you say, but this is quite complex and it's much more than financial literacy. I don't think. I think an attempt for society is something that creates social capital and that is where we all are better off by this. And that is how I became, uh, as Anna likes uh, that I say, I stand up. Uh, all just want to say, you stand up for financial literacy, and so I stand up for financial literacy because I know how important it is for the progress of society. Thank you. Thank you. A great speech. Thank you very much, Elsa.